you like that? How I said that. Okay, it's good to be here. If you would stand with me and turn to... Am I speaking English? Okay, okay, that's good. I was wondering if it came out the right way. Turn to Matthew chapter 10. <clears throat> I want to say it's a blessing to be here. And it really, it truly is. We're going to speak a little bit about a grace blessing. I told Pastor Shaler yesterday that we're saving that other part of the present your body a living sacrifice for him. The last part, the knees. Because he's really an awesome man of prayer and worship. So I told him I haven't had anything in my mind about that, so I'm going with something else. And he said, feel free, which is very good. And uh, I want to talk about a, a blessing that comes from grace. What is a grace blessing? Too often, I think we look at a Christian world today, and it's speaking about blessing, but it's always something that seems, it can be, it can be self-centered. It's all about me, my healing, my finances, my problems, my troubles, my tests, my trials, God bless me. And I really believe it's way more than that because Jesus will say something in these verses that will take us beyond just me being a receiver of grace, but me being a person who gives grace. That's really what a blessing is. So Matthew chapter 10, verse 8. Heal the sick. By the way, this was an amazing miracle of God. I just I want to stop there for a minute. There was a blind person that received their sight in uh, Bolgatanga when we were there. A, a blind person came away seeing, and I was like, I didn't even believe it. I told them they were like, telling that wasn't the truth. She wasn't really blind. And I had about as much belief as... A, a dead tortoise, you know, but uh, they, they proved it to me, and they, she came and said, I, I couldn't see, it's been about three years, and now I can see, because of a healing service, and an anointing with oil, and, um, but that's what the Bible says, you know, not, and it's all God, it's got nothing to do with a human being or their prayer, it is only God who answers the prayer, amen, who does the work, so heal the sick, cleanse the lepers, raise the dead, cast out devils. Freely, say this with me, freely you have received. Freely give. Freely you have received. Freely give. Now turn to Acts chapter 20. And there's a great verse. I was checking a, a number. I, I never really looked that much at commentators, but I was checking commentators because it's talking about remembering the words of the Lord Jesus. And every one of them said that Jesus never actually said that. And it wasn't written down in the Bible. But John 21, 25 says there are, if everything that Jesus said and did were written in a book, the whole world couldn't contain the volumes. So there's a lot of things that he said. And, and it became scripture because they said this is what he said. So Acts chapter 20, as Paul is speaking to the leaders of the church at Miletus, and he's moving with 10 men, and they are together, and he speaks about the grace of God in 20, 24, and 32. Verse 35 is an awesome verse. I have showed you all things, how that so laboring you ought to support the weak, and to remember the words of the Lord Jesus, how he said, and this is a great statement, it is more blessed to give than to what? To receive. It's more, it's more, it's blessing, it's a blessing to be given, but it's more of a blessing uh, to receive, but it's more of a blessing to give what you've received. So Father, bless this message. Thank you for Pastor Schaller and his family. Bless his preaching this morning in Maine, uh, in, the, in the church where he is, and the ministry that he has with people, Pastor Morrison, Pastor Doug Wombolt, different people that he will be ministering to in churches and places, cover his travel. We thank you. We uh, thank you for just a great, great blessing of receiving and giving. In Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated. Okay. First Peter chapter 4, verse 10 says, As you have received the gift... The grace-given gift. Are you with me? As you have received the grace-given gift, even so minister. 
as good stewards of the manifold, many-sided grace of God. I think when we come into the body of Christ and we are in fellowship, we understand what the many-sided grace of God is all about. There's just so many, so, it, it's multicolored, multicolored, the many-sided grace of God, that everybody has a, a, uh, as a member in particular, a portion of grace to give to one another. And grace is many-sided. And I think that is uh, incredible and amazing, the many-sided grace of God. But it says, as you have received, even so what? So what? So minister. As you have received, in other words, give. As a, a good steward isn't just a receiver. A good steward is a receiver and a giver. And really, this is what is the blessing of Christianity. A woman came and said to Jesus, blessed is the womb that bore you and the paps that you sucked. And he said, rather blessed are they who hear the word of God and keep it. He goes, there's a greater blessing than just what you're saying. There's something beyond that. Blessed is the, is the uh, person who hears the word of God and keeps it. And, you know, so often in Christianity today, you can maybe watch things and hear things, and it's either, it's either giving orientated or it's receiving orientated, but there's no balance to it. It's all about you doing or about you receiving, you receiving and doing nothing. You know that saying where it says God helps those who help themselves? Nonsense. Nonsense. God helps those who help others. He helps the helpless, number one, and he helps those who help others. I like that one. And so it's amazing that what is a blessing? A blessing, actually, the word eu logeo means that God speaks well of you. Isn't that awesome? Texas, Greg, God speaks well of you. I do too. I love your laugh. I wish I could record your laugh and wake up to it every morning. That would be a way of getting up in the morning, huh? His, his laughing. And now you're not laughing. There you go. Yeah, imagine if I heard that every morning. Huh? That would be like quite a shock, although I've never needed an alarm clock in my life. My eyes just look at the clock at night, waiting for it to tick. Tick. 3.38 this morning, I was watching it. 3.39, 3.40, 3.41, 3.42. It's good to watch it, you know, like, and just follow it for a number of hours. And... Um, but the blessing, the blessing of being a, a, not just a receiver, but a giver. I like Acts chapter 3, verse 6, when they came to the lame man at the beautiful gate. And uh, by the way, on that gate were all kinds of shields of silver and gold worth a lot of money. And he was begging. And Peter said, silver and gold have I none. But such as I have, such as I have received, I give to you. In the name of Jesus of Nazareth, rise up and walk. And then Romans chapter 1, verse 15, Paul says, As much as in me is, I want to proclaim the gospel. In other words, I haven't just received the gospel and gotten saved, but this gospel has been imparted to me, and I want to give this gospel out. And that's why we see many people sacrificially, whether it's in the Christian school or it's in the youth ministry or it's in Bible college or any aspect of the ministry, people are giving and they're really being blessed. Not just being receivers. We are receivers of the word, receivers of the spirit, receivers from the pulpit. But we are receivers and the blessing comes in not just receiving, but in giving. And this is so key. Just being a receiver, you know what a you know what a, a, a small stream. I love drinking, by the way, even in Africa, out of streams. Thank you for not responding, reacting to that. I love drinking out of streams. If you if I'm driving and I see like running water in the in the desert, I'll, I want I stop the car and say, "Can I stop for a minute? I got to find something." And I like bending down and just drinking the water from a stream. And I don't think about what's in it. But I've been in some places where the water goes in and there's no outlet. And what happens to that water it becomes what? Stagnant and smelly and murky. And I remember one time when we were baptizing, I told a story in Liberia, we were baptizing people in Liberia and we dipped a, a, a person in the water. Pastor Alfred and Pastor John Jason did it. I wouldn't put my feet in the water because I took a look at that water and I said, mm-mm. No, I don't know what's in that water. 
and we, we put a, a person in and they came out something different. They went in as a human and came out a little demonized. But so then they had the demons delivered from them. We prayed for them. They got saved and they got baptized again, which I thought was remarkable. That was a great blessing. <laughs> it's, it's like some, it was like some of our, our baptisms in Uganda. I remember one time dipping people in the water and then looking and seeing two eyeballs and said, that's a crock. I think it's time to get out of the water. Now. Now. So, okay, back to the message. Uh, being blessed and being a receiver and a giver. We, on the way to Burkina Faso this year, it was really amazing. We were like driving up this road in the Sahara Desert, this like desolate place where there's nothing. And this huge elephant comes right across the front of our car, snorting and like making like all kinds of funny noises and whatnot. I was just like looking like, oh my God, an elephant here in this place? And we pray. And so God answers prayer and I say, thank you for the blessing because the elephant kept going. Just keep going. You just keep going. That's a blessing, isn't it? Oh, yeah, that was, that was a blessing. That elephant, you know, an elephant just steps on your car, you're finished. Especially these Toyotas and whatever you call them things, these Nissans and Toyotas, which are made of plastic. Just puts his foot on it, and like you're like underneath. You're like a pancake in it. So we were blessed that the elephant kept going, which was great. But we had an awesome time. I think Pastor Scheller shared a lot of, about what happened in... Uh, West Africa this time. It was amazing. It was incredible. And by the way, right after the convention, all hell breaks loose. Three men uh, assault the pastor's son, and he's in a coma. But now he's out, and he's doing okay. Another person gets sick and goes to the hospital. Like, God is working, but the enemy is not like saying, that's nice. I'm so glad that God is working. I think I'll take a vacation. I think I'll do a little R&R. &R. No, he's, he's also working and is realizing that and not saying, well, I wonder why that's happening because of the tremendous blessing. I knew that something was really different when I got there because on Sunday night there was 1,200 people. I thought, something's up. 1,200 people on Sunday night, there's usually 500. Then we, we got towards Friday and Saturday, there was 2,000 people and people were standing everywhere. I said to the pastor, we got a small problem. He said, what's that, Pastor Chevelli? I said, we need 800 chairs right now for tomorrow. And on Sunday morning, there was 2,800 people that came. It was unbelievable. It was like looking at a football field and just seeing masses of people. I think you said you saw, showed a picture of that, right? It was a picture of that Pastor Chevelli showed with his. It was amazing. The response, the visitors, people crossing borders from everywhere. What a great blessing because what they were going to receive they were going to give. That's what I love about it. What they're going to receive, they're going to give. Blessed are those, uh, more blessed it is to be a giver than a receiver. And this is the words of the Lord Jesus, and are we to remember this? This is important. Do I remember this? It's more blessed to give than to receive. And so sometimes in a Christian's life, and even in my own life, I can testify to it. It's all about what, what it becomes almost a self-centered thing. My trial, my test, my problem, my sin, my old sin nature, my thorn, my besetting sin, my, my marriage, my family, my this, my finances, my, my, my sickness, my health. And I think sometimes it's just good to like forget about all that. And just say, I'm going to be a receiver of God, and I'm going to give even in the midst of it. Are you with me? Because that's more of a blessing. That's more of a blessing to not just be a receiver, but a giver. And really, and it's not work. Some, see, some people could take a message like this and leave it and say, oh, it's all about works and flesh, and it's not grace. That's because you don't understand grace. To think like that means you don't even know what grace is all about. Grace is not to be something that goes into a stagnant pool and just sits there and becomes murky. But grace is to be manifest in the lives of the body, in Christianity today, that people, want to, people are looking to see. So here's Peter in John 21, and he knows God loves him, and Jesus asks him a question. Before you can feed my sheep, do you love me? 
You know I love you. That's a blessing, isn't it? Is God loving you a blessing? I don't hear you. Yes. God loving me is a blessing. Me loving God and me loving other people, it's more blessed. There's more of a blessing in not just being loved by God, but by loving God and loving people. Are you with me? Huh? More blessed to give than to receive. And, and it's like I think there's a lot of Christianity. It's all, it's all about what, what I get, what I need, my needs, my wants, my needs, my problems, my situation, my life. And God would say, like, you know, come out of that. Just come out of that. It's more blessed to give than to receive. And so that everything I receive, you know, we were under the ministry of Pastor Stevens for many years receiving, receiving so much of God's thoughts and God's thinking and God's mind and God's spirit and God's purpose. But just to sit there with it, you know, I would always hear people come up and say, Pastor, great message. That's a great message. But you know what? I, one day I, uh, I said that to him and he looked at me. He said, you know what great message is, Pastor Chevelle? I said, what? He said, living it. <laughs> That doesn't mean you shouldn't say great message, okay? But he said, taking the message and running with the message, amen? Taking the message, God loves me, and I'm going to love God through the very love of God himself, and I'm going to love my brothers and sisters in Christ. That's more blessed, isn't it? Blessed it is to what? To give, more blessed to give than to receive. And I think that I can eliminate or kind of slow down a lot of blessings in my life by just being a receiver and never being a giver. And I'm not giving of myself. I'm just giving what God has given me. Are you with me? I'm just giving what God has given me. God gives you a gift to be a musician, an awesome member of the body and, and, and a musician, okay? Hey, and you never come up here. So you're blessed by getting the gift of being a musician. But it's more blessed when you do what? When you come up here and you minister to the body in song. Are you with me? Listening to me? Here's a blessing. God is merciful to me. Praise the Lord for that. I'm, thank, I'm thankful for that about every minute of every day. I know Pastor Cooper is too. <laughs> We're some bad sinners. <laughs> that God delivered, especially you. I'm not even going to talk about Sonny. He's, he's hiding over there behind him. Huh? So what a blessing. We've got finished work, mercy, and forgiveness from God. Isn't that amazing? What a blessing. You know what's even more blessed than that? To give mercy to people and to forgive people. Are you listening? It's more blessed to give mercy than to receive it. It begins with receiving it, but when I give mercy, that's even more blessed. We were out evangelizing yesterday, and it took a lot out of me to give mercy to some JWs. A lot. A lot. My God. You believe in Jehovah? You believe in Jehovah? His name is Jehovah? Do you worship Jehovah? I said, my friend, that name doesn't even exist in eternity. That's a hybrid name. It doesn't even exist. It's Yahweh. Exodus 3.11. John 8.58. Yahweh, I am that I am. Ego imai, or haya in the Hebrew. He's like, really? I said, Yes. Yes, and Jesus is Yahweh. He said, really? <laughs> See, I was being merciful, using Hebrew and Greek. So I, oh, it's a blessing to receive finished work mercy. It's a blessing to receive the finished work. How about to give it? It's more blessed to see somebody in the what? In the what? In the finished work. This is amazing. Now, it's a blessing to receive it, but it's more of a blessing to give it, to live in the finished work. These are the words of the Lord Jesus. Freely you have received, freely give. So we see our brothers and sisters in Christ. 
We don't see them in their failures, in their sins, or in how they have disappointed us, or how they have addressed us, or the way in which they have so-called uh, initiated towards us in a relationship. We see them in Christ, and that's more blessed. It's awesome. I see Pastor Aiden in Christ all the time. He's awesome because he's never out of Christ. That's what your wife told me. You never, you're always positionally and experientially in Christ. Isn't that true? Look at that, look at that. She went just like that. That's a blessing, isn't it? See that? That's a blessing. That's a blessing to see people in the finished work. Thank you for giving me a finished work position in Christ. That's a blessing. But you know what's more blessed? I see Jim Markowski in the finished work. I don't see him as the wolf man. I see him in the finished work. I see him in Christ. I see him in Christ. That's more of a blessing. Are you with me? Huh? Are you listening? Here's another one. I got saved. I received the gospel. That's a blessing. Born again, right? You know what's even more blessed? Give somebody the gospel. Hello. Hello. Oh, oh the silence is not golden. No, it's awesome. We have, we have received the message of the gospel. It's good news, a message to cheer the hearers. And we are so blessed. We have received this amazing message. But it's more blessed to do what? To what? To give than to receive. Huh? To give than to receive. It begins with giving. It begins with giving. But then, it begins with receiving, but then I give. Then I give as a good steward of the manifold grace of God. See, grace is meant to flow through us. This is the person of the Holy Spirit. And it's incredible. You know, when I see what this church has done in Africa, Jesus Christ and his body, that's you. When I see what is taken, when I, when I looked at what took place in West Africa on this last trip, it's amazing that... Not only are you blessed in what you have received, but what you are doing there through your prayers and your financial support and the sending of people. Like, by the way, we don't go unless you send us. Are you with me? Hello? Huh? We go because you send and you pray. And you're, what a blessing to the people that are there. They appreciate it in an incredible way what God is doing there. We have pastors meetings with 100 pastors. What a blessing. Listen to this one story. The pastor from Niger. Anybody heard about Niger? What's going on there with fundamental knuckleheads? I don't care what I say. I don't want, people say, you know, you better be careful. You say something else, the Bible will sue you. Go, well, whatever. Like that hasn't happened before? <laughs> whatever. Anyway, I'm sorry. I'll calm down. He said, I said to him, you came to the convention. Where'd you come from? He goes, from Niger. I said, they burned your house. Yes or no? Yes. They burned your church. Yes. They tried to burn your family and stone them. Yes. And you went back. He said, yes. I'm like, huh? And we think we got problems, right? Huh? I'm like, God, the parking lot. I had to walk from over there. I had to, I had to walk from over where like Newberry's used to. I had to walk from the gym. The parking lot was so crowded, right? Really? The price of gas went up. Oh, my God! What are we going to do? What are we going to do? The debate. Who cares? Whatever, you know? I mean, we can get so caught up in something that's amazing to me. Right? He says, I went back because there's a revival in Niger. He says, our church went from 12 people to 75 to 100 in a fundamental country where 99.9% .9 of the people are of another persuasion. He says, I got to give what God gave me. I got to give the message of what God gave me. Because that's the blessing. I said, what if, I mean, did you think about going back without your family? He said, no. We go together. I'm like, wow. Now you could say, okay, that's not very wise. He ought to, like, somebody ought to counsel him, and he ought to go read a manual on family life. Whatever. You talk to him about it. I'm not going to touch that with anything, okay? He says, God told us to go back, and there's going to be a revival. Are you listening? He says, because I have received something from this ministry, a message, the gospel of grace, and Niger needs the message. 
Hello. That's for three people that are sleeping. I can see you a mile away. I'm just joking. It's not a mile in here. But it's a blessing. He says, I've got a gospel. How about this? God has given us an eternal purpose as a church and as an individual believer. You know what's even better than that? What's more blessed than that? To give that eternal purpose out and to be a partaker of that eternal purpose. That's more of a blessing. Not just to receive an eternal purpose when I'm saved from God, but to live in an eternal purpose. To receive God's word is a blessing, isn't it? By the way, you know how many countries there are that cannot even have a Bible or preaching or a church? It's a blessing to have a church where you can hear the word. Hello. I, I still think I'm in Togo, so sorry, excuse me. Hey, the response is outrageous. They just start jumping up and down. And it's awesome. Huh? What a blessing to be in a country where you can hear the word of God. Are you with me? And that's one of the reasons why that country is going so rapidly with souls. Because for only the last 25 years, they've had the Bible. Only the last 25 years, they've been allowed to go forward with really churches and preaching and evangelism. They haven't had what a lot of people had for like 200 years in Africa prior to that. It's a blessing to have the Bible and to have a church and to be able to come to church. It's amazing to me what happens to people. I used to be in church all the time, and what happened? Oh, well, you know. I got to go to Ocean City. No, oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, whatever, you know. I hate the beach. No, it's okay if you like it. I just don't like it. I don't, I don't, I don't. The water's not even, I mean, I like swimming in places where, like, sharks are. I had a great theory about how to get rid of sharks. Yeah, you cut yourself, and you bleed, and you go into the water with a gun. And when they come... That's the end of sharks. Now, I know that some people on these animal channels would get violently upset about that and saying, you are harming God's creatures. That's if God made them. I don't know. You know. Whatever. Listen. It's a blessing to have a church, isn't it? With the word, isn't it? And it's a blessing to plant churches. We didn't just stay here and say, isn't it nice? We've got this little church in Maine, this little church in Lenox, this little church in Baltimore. Let's just stay here, build a white picket fence, get an organ, have all kinds of nice chairs, and just sit here for the rest of our lives until Jesus comes. Well, no. We said we're going to take, what? The word and the church and go into all the world and plant churches in 80 countries. That's a what? That's more blessed. That's not just the blessing of having a church. That's the blessing of planting churches. You know what's amazing to me? You know Wilson and Jack from Farmers? Is, is Wilson 84? I don't, I, I don't want to misquote his age. 84 years old. He's walking around Africa like an 18-year-old. I said, Wilson, don't you think you're here at 8 o'clock in the morning with the beads and you're in your booth all day long ministering to people? Don't you think it's good to take a two- or three-hour break in the afternoon? He says, for what? He just disciplined me. Just disciplined me. And he's there till 11 o'clock at night. From 8 o'clock in the morning at 84 years old. You know why? He says, I have received something. And if I die doing that, that's okay. I have received something from God. And I'm going to give it to people. That's even a greater blessing. Are you listening? I receive a, I got a great new salary and a great new job, and I'm making good money. Okay, that's a blessing. But are you giving it? Hello? Are you giving it? Are you tithing? Are you going beyond tithing and offering so we don't have to have a deficit ever? It's more blessed to what? To receive it or to give it? It's more blessed to receive and give it. And give it. This is so important. Oh, God is so faithful to me. God is so faithful to me. Awesome. Okay, that's a blessing to receive his faithfulness. How about being faithful? It's more blessed to be faithful than to just receive faithfulness. Are we getting the picture here? It's a blessing to have the Holy Spirit. It's a greater blessing to live spiritually. Hello. It's a blessing to be encouraged. It's a greater blessing to encourage people. And that's 2 Corinthians chapter 1 verses 1 through 3 blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ 
who has comforted us with all of his mercies and his comfort so that we might encourage and comfort others in their tribulation. He gives it to me so I can give it to what? Other people. Oh, it's awesome being a disciple. What a blessing. How about discipling others? <clears throat> How about discipling others? It's more blessed to disciple others, to raise others, to train up Timothys and Tituses and Epaphroditus. That's the blessing. God has blessed me with a great gift of teaching. Go to the school. Go teach in the school. That's an even greater blessing, isn't it? Oh, I'm not going to teach. I, but God's given me a gift of teaching, but I'm not going to teach. So you've been blessed by giving the gift of teaching, but you don't want to teach. Why? Well, I, 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 can, I can do better at this job. Oh, really? It's more blessed to what? To give your gift of teaching than to receive it. You've received it, now what? Minister to it. Minister and give it. This is the blessing of grace. And by the way, the word blessing is, is, is a benefit. It means it's a benefit and it's a privilege. But there's something even beyond that. The word blessing means God speaks well of me. So that means it's more blessed. God even speaks more well of me when I what? I am imparting. Paul said in 1 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 8, I didn't come to you to just give you the gospel of God only, but to impart my very life. I came to impart my life. And this is what we see. We see people, you know, I'm looking at people and they are just like, the poverty? I don't even know what that is when I think about some of these people that exist on $75 a month. They're there, $75 a month. I said to one person, how do you feed all these orphans for 30 bucks a month? He says, it's miraculous. It's a miracle how we do each child 30 bucks. We put it all together and we grow the food and we, make, and we, we're, we, we have a bakery and we bake bread and everybody eats and we can do it and we are so blessed that we want to also bring in more. Recently, one of our orphanages just added 35, 35 new orphans. Because somebody said they couldn't do it anymore, the orphanage. They gave up their orphanage, and they just presented the kids in the front door of our orphanage. Thank you. That's awesome. Bring some more, too. Somebody asked me on the phone, what do I do with these kids? I said, I'll tell you what we do. Give them a place to live and feed them. And let's go. Somebody just gave. I was praying. I said, God, we, these kids are not, there's, there's like six on a mattress. Give me some mattresses. I want mattresses, God. And I want tables to eat on because I don't want them eating on their beds because that brings bugs. And when I came back, somebody had given me a, a gift, the children of grace, to buy all new mattresses and tables for the kids. And that person is going to be blessed. Everybody else is blessed, but that person is what? That person is really going to be blessed. It's more blessed to give than to receive. And that's amazing. And I'm not out here asking for money. I don't need your money. Okay, just whatever. Just so you get that in your brain. I don't need, we don't need money. God brings it. It's, if it's God's work done God's way, God will what? Provide. I wonder what God's going to do. This is a situation financially. Oh, you know what? Go put your head under a bucket and pray for a while. Oh, what's wrong? You know, God provides. Amen? Are you listening? It's more blessed to give than to receive. So we've got this life from God, and it's a blessing. We have received life from God. All we have to do is just say yes and live the life. And that's all by grace. This is a grace blessing. Not just to be a receiver, but be a giver. If you don't take in air, it's hard to live, isn't it? Mm -hmm. It's hard to live. So as we close this morning, as you have always done, and I, I commend you for it, always being people that have been receivers and givers. Let's keep going, okay? Let's keep receiving and let's keep going. Let's keep receiving and let's keep letting that, that water flow. There, it goes into the pond and then it goes out, fresh water. And that's what keeps it from becoming stagnant. In my life, I keep giving and God keeps what? Overflowing with more. He keeps giving more and giving more and giving more and giving more. And I keep, give, I keep receiving and then I keep giving and I keep giving. And that's depleted and God's giving more and God's giving more and God's giving more. More churches, amen? We've got 693 churches right now. And I, I'm believing God for 1,000 churches for greater grace in this world. 1,000 churches from 693 to 1,000. Why? And why? 
wait a minute, you know, can't we sit back and relax based upon what we've seen done and what we've done? No relaxing. We rest in God, but we don't relax. We don't step back, shut up, put up, or back up. We keep receiving and we keep going. Amen? Amen. This, is what it, that's, this is the blessing that we have. Father, thank you today. Freely we have received. Freely we give. Remember the words of the Lord Jesus is more blessed to be a giver than a receiver. To receive and give and receive and give and to receive and give and to receive and keep giving. Help us, God. Oh, Christianity has taken on the world's mindset, become very selfish. Just its own situations. Oh, my marriage, my problems, my trouble. If you and I would come out of that, we would, as we, begin, we would begin to minister in the midst of our trial, watch what God would do. Many times those things never end because we are occupied with them instead of being occupied with Jesus Christ. Let's be occupied with God himself. And watch him give. Watch him give. We receive and we give. And we receive and we give. And we keep on giving. Remember the words of the Lord Jesus. It is more blessed to what? To give than to receive. He's talking to leaders. He's talking to people in Acts 20 that he told about receiving the ministry of the Lord Jesus to testify of the gospel of grace. He's talking about people that he said, I commend you to God and to the word of his grace. He says, I want you to remember something. You have received so much. You've received a calling. You've received the purpose. You've received the person of the Holy Spirit. You've received life. You are going to receive heaven. Give it out. We just give. That's the blessing. How many miss the blessing of God? They just become receivers and never become givers. And we thank you today. Touch our lives today with the ministry of receiving and giving. We would remember what Jesus said, freely you have received, freely give. Grace receiving, grace giving. If you are here this morning, you've never received Jesus Christ as your personal Savior. God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son. He gave the son of God. He was in the Trinity and he decided to come. Today, say, Jesus, save me. Come into my life, cleanse me of sin. I believe in you. Be merciful to me. Help me. Save me. That's your prayer on the internet or in the assembly hall with our eyes closed, our heads bowed. Just put your hand up. Jesus, save me. I receive you today as my personal Savior. I want to be a receiver of your life. Anyone. Father, we thank you today. Help us, God. We want to experience a blessing of grace, to be receivers and to be givers. A husband giving to his wife, a wife giving to the husband, parents to the children, children to the parents, students to teachers, teachers to students, body members one to another, receiving and giving. In every aspect, the word, faith, life, purpose, love, mercy, comfort, joy, long-suffering, patience, receivers, and givers. We thank you. Bless this day in Jesus' name. Bring us back tonight with a great expectation. And we are so grateful that we have a church. Thank you for what you've given us. Now help us to bring this message throughout this state, city, state, country, and world. In Jesus' name, amen.